YouTube junkies welcome back to the show once again you know I got to thinking the other day got an idea for a video about your setup I bet you if I ask uh, many of you to explain to me in detail your guitar setup that a lot of you wouldn't be able to do it you wouldn't know what your nut action is you wouldn't know what your relief is set at and you probably wouldn't know your string action most people don't. Most guitarists don't know that. Now, I do occasionally get a guy to bring me his guitar or send it to me. I get most of them in the mail nowadays, but occasionally I do get one that uh, it'll have a sheet of paper with it and it'll say, you know, what to set the nut action at, what to set the neck relief at, or if they want a straight neck, uh, what the string action sets at on the high string, on every string, in fact, some of them do. Some of them even will say, like, uh, on the, say on the second string, 12th fret, they want that to intonate a little bit flat. Now, I don't know if it's because they have heavy hands and they squeeze too hard. Maybe their fingerboard might be scalloped. But they will say stuff like that. Second string on the 12th fret, intonate it to note uh, three, four cents flat. Or, you know, maybe the fourth string on the, 8th fret intonate, you know, intonate 4 cents flat. I get that a lot, you know, not a, not a whole lot, but, you know, quite more frequent than you would think, actually. So uh, I thought it would be a good video to <clears throat> tell you, like when you set, when I set a guitar up for someone, there is no way that I can set that guitar, you know, I can set it up the way I like it. But they may not like it. The action might be too low for them, or maybe, you know, it's not low enough, or maybe it doesn't intonate to their ears exactly, or maybe it's because of the way they play. There's a ton of reasons and things. So, uh, I charge $20 to do this, just to measure everything out for someone and write it all down, make them out a, a record. I, I take the nut action, take the neck relief, uh, take the string action on each string at the 12th fret and I check the intonation and all that stuff and set it you know to their specs but like I say there's not all that many of them that does it usually they just reach me a guitar and say set it up you know and uh, usually in those cases I set it up kind of the way I like it maybe with strings action a little bit higher than I like because I don't know if they have a heavy hand or if they uh, finger pick unless they tell me or if they have a really a light touch you know I don't know and uh, you can't set a guitar up for someone unless they give you their specifications telling you exactly the way they want it set up now I get guitars in here sometimes for whatever reason whatever needs fixed and the uh, owner will tell me you know I want that exact setup I want it exactly the way it is right now maybe they want heavier gauge strings or lighter gauge strings, you know, that changes a lot of things, your neck relief being one. And uh, if I go to a heavier gauge string, then I have to reset the, the uh, neck relief, and the string action changes because the neck relief did, so i got to reset that. But uh, the point of the video is, you should know your own setup. If you have a guitar and you love the way it plays, and everything about that guitar is perfect for you, Man, record those numbers, guys and ladies. Record those numbers. Get them down on paper or memorize them or whatever you got to do. I know what all of mine are. And every guitar player should because if something would happen to that guitar, if the neck got broke or if just the, uh, the weather, the environment changed it, wood changes all the time, you might get it out one day and, holy shit, what happened to my action? It's way high, you know. And you don't know what the number was, the, the action settings, or anything to set it back like it was. So uh, take this as a word of warning. If you have a guitar that you really love, that plays the way you really dig everything about it, record those, action, those, uh, those get your nut action, okay? 
get your neck relief write this all down get your string action on every string at the 12th fret some basis the 17th fret but whatever get that stuff recorded uh, some people even like their string uh, width the, the distance between their strings you know they even record that write that down and usually it's the same you know on whatever it is from a second to third will be the same from a third to the fourth and so on or it should be that way it's not always but uh, uh, you know just all kind of stuff pick up height on electric guitars uh, some guys like them higher than other guys do now they should be set to where the magnets not actually sucking the string down or interfering with the way it resonates or the elliptic pattern that it follows normally when it's plucked but uh, just all kind of stuff like that I've got a list of things here um, nut action you should record that I like mine between 16 and 18 thousandths uh, neck relief you should measure yours or take it to a luthier or a guitar tech or send it to me I'll do it and you can bet they'll be accurate <laughs> Uh, and having to record uh, your neck relief. Some guys like a straight neck. They don't want any relief in it. Some like 10,000. I prefer 12,000. Uh, I know guys that like 14. You know, it just depends on how they play again and how much room the strings need to vibrate. Uh, string action there again at the 12th fret. I like 364s on my first string and 464 on a 6th string on acoustic guitar. Um, some of them, like I say, will want certain strings to intonate flat in certain areas and you can accommodate that by playing with the intonation back here. Like I say, I don't know, they, maybe they have a scalloped fretboard or maybe they just squeeze too hard and they bend the, the string, one string or two or however many, out of tune, sharp. So if it's set up to intonate flat, then of course it'll be in tune when they play the chord. This is the guitar that needs frets that we're going to do frets on real soon. Uh, the radius of your fretboard, your strings should match that identically. Uh, a compound radius board, you want it to match, you know, that well, naturally you're going to have to set it to match down here because you don't have much radius on this end but you want the strings to match that as closely as possible a lot of people guitar players don't even know this if you guys remember that washburn guitar i worked on a while back it was in terrible shape when it came in here and uh the frets were in terrible shape when it left but there again i was told not to bother the frets but yeah the radius you know you should have that check make sure that the radius of your strings match the radius of your fretboard exactly uh, that's just another thing string gauge like I say if you go up or down especially in acoustic guitars with you know I use a, a .013 to .056 that's really heavy and if I would go down you know like to a, a, a 10 this thing would drastically change I'd have to reset the whole guitar set up all the action and probably intonation and relief and everything again. The only thing it might not change enough to work on would be the nut or first fret action. But uh, I'm telling you, man, if you have a guitar that you love, it plays everything about it is the way you like it. If you can't, if you don't have the means to take those measurements, then take that guitar as quickly as you can to a good reputable tech or luthier. And have him measure that. It's not more than 20 or 30 bucks. Some of them gets a little wild. It might be charging more than that, but it shouldn't be any more than that. Have them to, you know, tell them you want the nut action, you want the uh, neck relief, you want the string action on every string at the 12th fret. Uh, you want to check the string spacing. You want to check the intonation, the harmonics. Every tell, go over it and record everything that you can. And then if anything happens to that guitar. You know, if it gets knocked over or broke, we got company. She's feeling a lot better. I think you're going to find out, probably. It looks like she's got that look in her eye. Anyways, uh, if you if your guitar gets knocked over or broken, or uh, say you go and you buy a new guitar or another guitar, 
and it's just real shitty to play. Well, you can take the, the numbers that you recorded from the guitar that you like, and you can get real close, very close, setting this new guitar up the same way your old one is set up. I have three guitars that I rotate, the three that I play uh, uh, almost all the time, and I alternate the three of them. This is one of them. I have, it's a Martin. I have another Martin and a Blue Ridge. And they are all set up nearly identical, as close as I can set the three of them up. Uh, same neck relief, same nut action, same string action. Everything's as close as I can get to three. The only difference I can feel is the width and the fatness of the neck, you know, the different sizes in the necks of the three. This has got the biggest neck of the three. It's the best sounding one, but it's got the huge neck on it. I don't know why they put such a neck on a guitar like this. Unless it's got something to do with the sound. And it very well could have. The strings are shot and the frets are shot. But anyways, I wanted to make this quick video for you and tell you guys about that. Uh, if you have a guitar that you like, you know, Take it somewhere as fast as you can get there with it and have, or do it yourself. Take all those measurements, write them down on paper, throw them in the case, or put them in your guitar, or whatever you got to do. But keep them and, and have them and know where they are. And like I say, even if you buy another guitar, you're going to know, you know, by those numbers, real close to where you want the other, the new guitar set up at. So, uh... I wanted to tell you guys about that. Maybe you want to think about that. You really should think about it and know your setup. You should know at least your nut action, your neck relief, and your first and sixth string action at the 12th fret. You should know at least that in your mind without even having to look at a piece of paper. Okay, uh, one little last complaint here. <laughs> uh, like I told you guys before, I don't mind coat tailors, man. Any of y'all want to promote your channel on my channel, feel free to do it. Jump on and let's go. I mean, I'll help you if, if I know about it and can, I'll help you. I don't mind people riding coattails. But, Oakley Sunglasses, you're going a little bit far. Uh, any of y'all want to take a look at my Facebook page, you'll see what, well, I deleted them all. But I think there's another one back up there now. Man, Last week, it was every day, man, someone was posting an ad for Oakley sunglasses on my Facebook page. I don't remember even what it said now. It's like a cheap price for the glasses, but, uh, you know, I said, hey, give me a pair of the damn glasses if you're going to do this. They'd, you know, they didn't ask me to do it, didn't ask for my permission. Just all these people started bombarding me with Oakley sunglasses uh, ads and uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if they're promoting the sunglasses individually on their own or if they're getting something for it. I don't know and I don't care. But, uh, you know, at least I'd like to at least know that, uh, you know, if someone's going to use me for advertisement, at least ask me about it first. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I don't know. There may, There's one, I think, left on there now. There might be more than that by now. I looked at it today, and I know there's one there. But, you know, if you guys watch this channel, you Oakley guys, get some damn control, for crying out loud. But anyone else that wants to, uh, wants to ride the coattail, do feel free. Do feel free to hop on and uh, ride it, baby. Cue Ball's doing much better. She's, uh, I don't know what was wrong with her. I, I still don't know what it was, but she's, her neck's better now. I can pick her up and wrestle with her and throw her around, and we have a good time outside, don't we? She's a bird dog. She loves chase. You want to go chase birdies? You want to go chase them birdies? Whoa! Let's go get the birdies. Woo! Tell, tell the folks. I love you. I love you. Don't get, don't get too excited.